KOAT is New Mexico's certified most accurate for five straight years. A state investigation is underway in a well-known center for troubled teens. The Environment Department tells us it already found violations with the Teen Challenge of New Mexico. We've also learned CYFD is investigating. Action 7 News reporter Todd Unger joins us with more on this developing story. That's right, Shelley. Teen Challenge is a place for young men and women to learn about school, faith, and how to better prepare themselves for adulthood. But at the Young Men's Facility near Clayton, New Mexico, some of the young teens experienced far more than they signed up for. We're blurring the faces of these troubled youth, but you can clearly make out what they're doing. Cleaning up raw sewage from an overflowing septic tank in shorts and t-shirts. The pictures were snapped at Teen Challenge's adolescent boy facility in Greenville, near Clayton up north. It prompted a visit from the state environmental department and this violation inspection report from last month. The state warns the facility about the huge sewage backflow. Team New Mexico responded to the complaint, saying it would properly clean up the site and blames what you see in the photos on a former employee. But a page straight out of Team Challenge's own student handbook clearly indicates sewer cleanup needs to happen twice a week. Sources say all of it has prompted CYFD to launch its own investigation into just what was going on in Greenville, for how long, and who is responsible. Now, that septic tank was eventually cleared out, but we've learned there was quite a bit of waste in it. Teens Challenges New Mexico director would not comment on the record, instead referring us to an attorney. While all of this has been going on, the boys' facility has quietly closed, sending home its handful of male students. The group also operates girls' facilities, which don't appear to be part of any... They were. This is Cynthia Ortiz. These are the Charles Perry Stalker podcasts. This right here um, is part of... Um, the tangled web Mr. Perry has weaved. Um, we have a witness, remember, that stated that he, um, as long as I've known Charles, I'm quoting right now the witness. The, and you don't know how many we have, Mr. Perry. Um, as long as I've known Charles Perry, he will troll women. He likes to travel and will not take Jacqueline, his wife, with him. He will go alone. Nobody knows really what he's up to. So he'll travel and troll women, find divorced women with kids by the landlord or the maintenance guy or a locksmith and get a key. He's got a key to every place I've lived in, every car I drive, without my consent. When you get into somebody's home without their consent, buying a key doesn't mean it's not breaking and entering. No sign of for forced entry doesn't mean it's br not breaking and entering. It is. So they, they break into my house uh, the other day. I come home and my TV's off. The lights on my fish tank were all whacked out. And the refrigerator door was open. It's almost like he wanted me to call TPD. He's been telling me, call TPD, call TPD. And we're all like, for what? What is it you want me to, you want, to, you want them to pull me over? You want me to call them? You've been saying that for a long time. We've said it over and over and over and over. And I don't really need to because there are cops from somewhere else helping me that got that witness statement. Then he said, the witness said, um, he will cause these women to lose their jobs. He hacks them, makes sure they can't find another job. Then they put it puts strain on the family because they're trying, you know, they're asking for help. And then, uh, you know, you need to ask for money. Um, and then uh, after a while, that starts to put strain on the family. The family begins to berate them. And um, not all family members of mine did that, but some. And um, they, you know, they blame the woman instead of going, wow. She's been fine all this time, provided a very stable, happy home, and all of a sudden things are whacking, whacking out. Maybe it's not her fault. Maybe you ought to look into why this is happening. Then she can't find another job. Then he causes them to lose their house. Then he has the ex take the kids away. So what he did, in my situation, the guy goes, he wanted a handout. He wanted me to put money into his company. He's got an online peep show. He'll broadcast that all over the dark web. And he sells watch time using these women's bodies and their homes, and their property, and their lights, and their internet service sometimes. You're using women. You're abusive to women. Women don't like that, so that's why you're alone and rejected and told on. You're pissing everybody off, Mr. Perry. You're hideous. You're a monster. You get anywhere near me, I'll beat the fuck out of you. I'm not going to go where you are, but if you ever come near me, I kid you not, you better have a football helmet on. You better have the full padding on, too. I'll beat the shit out of you. And I think you know I can do that. 
So, and if since you're lazy and sit on your fat ass watching TV all day, it won't be hard. Um, so, anyways, what my parents did, the parents, the one that, Lynn, that lied, you can see it right here, he flat out lied. They did that to me. I sent my kid to, to Tristan. First, my ex-husband came became verbally abusive. I made him leave. We got a divorce. We're good friends now, but we couldn't, you know, I'm not going to let that in my house. Then my son starts having problems. They have him coerced into signing an affidavit that said he was afraid of me. He was supposed to come home. He had gone to Teen Challenge, and um, although they didn't actually take him to that center, it, why would they do that? It closed down. They're making those boys clean out sewage with no protective clothing on. Moldy food. They were making them eat moldy food. Their education was bad. Um, they had uh, a couple of the kids told me I, I, I did all of sixth grade work, and all of a sudden I get a high school diploma and I go home. I'm trying to get in the military, and they won't take my diploma. I'm trying to get into college, nobody will take it. So i got to go back to school, get a GED, go to a community college, and try again. So they had some education problems. One person, one girl, you know, called me and said that, uh, I mean, I'm listening to these kids crying on the phone, telling them what my parents did to them, and, and it went back years. So um, one girl goes, I, I had seizures, and they wouldn't take me to the doctor, and I had insurance. I had everything I needed, so they wouldn't take me to the doctor. End up, I get home, I had some severe brain damage. I had to have surgery. I'll never be the same. So medical neglect, education neglect, uh, food neglect, clean, you know. And the thing is, is Lynn had a, a, a TV that in his home that would have paid for that sewer. They, they traveled, bought lots of food, lots of stuff, bought all kinds of shit, and everybody knew it. Those girls, those kids went in their house, saw the big old TV. You, probably, you know, a $1,000 TV, a $1,000 to drain the sewage. Cost about the same. So, um... Basically, what Charles did was prove out that witness on, on with me. The guy said, "Did is did he do that to Cynthia? And you know, her her ex took the kids away after he makes her go broke and uh, blows up these little kids' lives." By the way, watching okay, watching the women in her in their home broadcasting that all over the internet. They got kids in the house. These old men, these little old fart weirdos, watch these kids take a bath and go jack off. The witness said he'll go rub one out. He likes getting women upset. He's a sex sadist. So I'm, I'm quoting a witness here, Mr. Perry. It's crime causation. You're the causation. And uh, another one of his guys said, we've never had one figure out we had cameras on them and uh, that we were causing their problems and send us an invoice, $1,000 a day plus $2,000 a day for watching me in my house without my consent. And you're going to pay it. So, um... I know you, you, Mr. Perry, I'll type in my phone. I'm not going to pay you. Okay, if you say so, Mr. I can't find the recordings. And I can't get a date and nobody will help me get information as to who's helping you. Um, go ahead. You can tell yourself that all you want. Then um, we'll, we'll laugh at you. As many times as you get caught, nobody can explain it. We've never had one do this with this kind of longevity. We've never had one figure out we're the ones with the cameras in their house. We're the ones causing their problems. No one sell, sued us and, and uh, sent us an invoice and, and, and uh, solved a murder. We committed to cover all that up. But I do. So tell me again how you're not going to pay me. Go ahead. You tell me again. Do it. I dare you. Call one more time to my friends and family, family and make them tell you what I said in a text and ask you what they can say back to me. Do it. I dare you. Just act natural around her. Do it again. I do. One more time. I dare you. We'll sit back and laugh. We'll sit back and laugh. So what the judge ruled in my son's case, the witness said he's glad somebody's finally making you stop. He said, this bitch came to me looking for a handout. He wanted me to invest in his company. I, I wish I had could unhear what I heard. I'm sick of sleeping with one eye open. I'm glad finally somebody's going to stop it. Put a stop to this. It's sick. He said, this is some sick, twisted shit no normal person could even think up. The shit you people do. So, I feel bad for you that you're that mentally ill that you would do that. I can't get this to play. Hang on.
Time now for the morning rush. We could soon find out if the state's Judicial Standards Commission will investigate the DWI case against District Court Judge Deborah Walker. This morning, her case is stalled, and here's why. All of the judges in Bernalillo County have recused themselves. When a judge is chosen to preside over the case, they will likely watch this lapel video showing her arrest. Officers say Walker was twice the legal limit that night. Kristen. Looking at more sunshine today across northern and central. So that was the judge that took my son away, and her ruling was, um, first they, they have my son submit an affidavit that said he's afraid of me. He was supposed to come home. I bought him a plane ticket. Instead of putting him on a plane, they, my Lynn and Kathy went and filed emergency custody. And this was after, um, see, his dad didn't really pay child support for a long time. Then he did. And um, so he owed a lot of back child support. Um, they started asking me a lot of questions about that. My son tells me, uh, Brandon is worth millions of dollars. And I'm like, no, he's not. And he goes, no, you need to take him back to court, get his money. I said, Tristan, who told you to say that to me? Because I'm not going to do that. Your dad and I worked out our, um, child support agreement and we're done with it. We're fine with it. I'm fine with it. We're not changing a fucking thing. And he says, no, he's worth millions. I said, no, he's not worth millions. He, 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 where'd you get that idea? Well, well, Shelly Googled it and found it. I said, nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you for the last time, leave it alone. So I Googled it, and there was a, an article called Seamless. Right here. Um, he found this article that, where he's talking about Brandon kind of came up with the idea to in a strip club, it's a strip club in the day, you take the f chairs off the floor, you put a DJ booth on the stage, and it's a, and it's a uh, dance club, nightclub, and it was called Seamless. The club itself was worth millions, and they misread it, so I'm telling uh, Lynn and Kathy, you guys misread the article. It says the club's worth that much money, not Brandon. So we believe they wanted the child support money. All of a sudden, I'm getting child support money. All of a sudden, they found a way to get to it. That was one of the first things they asked for. We want the child support money. So it's fraud. Um, I believe that um, there was some conversations between me and law enforcement in Lubbock at the time, and the FBI was consulted. Can we get them on fraud? And he, the guy, I think it was Keith Quigley, said, not unless they take 100 grand. It does look like fraud. Tristan committed fraud. He said I w he was scared of me. Well, Tristan was a big boy, and he was knocking down, you know, six foot, 300 pound football players on the football field. I'm 5'2, weighed 110 pounds at that time. Um, I was a little bitty, itty bitty person. So um, he lied. So when I said that in court to Judge Walker, listen, Judge, uh, he could knock me flat. He could put me in a coma. That's bullshit. Then they changed it and said he was abusive to me. And that um, in a deposition, his attorney, that Lenny Cathy's attorney said, was there an incident where he grabbed you by the arm and uh, pu pulled you, put you on the couch? He became physically abusive with you. And I said, no, he did. I was walking by the couch and he was sitting on it and he wanted me to talk to him, sit down and talk to him. So he did grab my arm and pull me to the couch. It wasn't done in a violent way it was like he just like kids do i mean uh there was no bruising there was my arm wasn't even red i mean it was not uh i wasn't scared i didn't um fear for myself my safety i mean it wasn't done in a abusive of a violent way at all he just grabbed my arm and pulled me to the couch and hey i need to talk to you so what what that where the hell did you get that it, you took a situation that was a perfectly normal situation and turned it into something it wasn't. So based on that, <coughs> Judge Walker's ruling was you had to send him to a drug treatment program so you can't take care of his needs. You allow abu verbal abuse in the home and your son is vi physical violence in the home. Okay, well, none of that was true. I sent my son to a program that my parents ran because he was having a hard time and I didn't want him to end up in jail. So we got on it soon. We didn't let things get bad. Um, and uh, you, who do you, if you can't trust your parents, who, do you, who, 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 can you, who can you trust? And as you saw in that story, my dad will lie. 
if it suits him, he'll lie. So, um, they had, um, uh, and that, and the, the verbal abuse was ended before we, they filed for custody. I made my ex-husband leave. We got divorced. So there was no more verbal abuse in the home. I did not allow it. My ex-husband had been gone for about a year, year and a half when she made that ruling. Um, and my son was not physically violent with me at all. Not, not even a little bit. Never once did he try to hurt me. So um, she made crap up, in other words. But this, was, this is in, in line with what the witness statement was. That's how you support a witness statement, you dumb son of a bitch. We don't just take what people say. It's got to be supported by something, evidence. Evidence can include acts, actions of people. I believe Rule 404 and Federal Rules of Evidence allows for that, does it not? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Ask your lawyer. Are our, our, our prosecutors using it? What you've done to me uh, is supporting the witness claim. You build a case. It's brick by brick. Yeah, I can't wait till your jury hears all this. And every minute of every day you raped me and pestered me and every penny you cost me and every minute of my time. And so you're not going to pay me? Okay. You go tell yourself that. Kind of like you have a romance with a TV show and you can't identify your legislative duties or what state you legislate in. You think a lot of things, Mr. Perry, but none of them are, are most of them are wacky. There are, there are a lot of wacky shit, you, th you think. So... Judge Walker ends up in jail for uh, DUI, and she had to resign from the bench. Um, and Lenny Cathy got in trouble for child abuse. Now, subsequently, after that story aired, by the way, that reporter, we, you know, hats off to him for asking those questions and asking for evidence um, to support or, or, or disprove Lynn's claims. I'm glad he did that and didn't just go with it. Oh, well, he said. I'm glad that he dug a little deeper. That reporter, by the way, is now in Waco. Um, so I think he did some W. I think he worked at WFAA in Dallas for some time. Now he's in Waco. So anyways, um, the state police in New Mexico did go in and investigate the girls' facility. Um, they were limited. Susanna Martinez basically tied their hands she would not let them do the investigation that they wanted to do after that tierra blanca ranch had a closure due to a fatality of one of their students these places are faith-based they don't take state money so there's no oversight it's a church they got religious freedoms right we got the religious freedom to abuse the shit out of your kid and you can't do a fucking thing about it right so Tierra Blanca Ranch owners and their attorneys threw a fit, and the state has no, there's no law that allows you to do this. We're a church. And um, Susanna Martinez defended the actions of CYFD in intervening for those kids. So I got in touch with her office, and I said, well, which one is true? We wanted you to go in and investigate the girls. You wouldn't let the state police do it. So you said the laws prohibited it. Now they all of a sudden they don't. They allow it. Which one is true, Susanna? Well, all of a sudden, here comes the state police. Now we can look into it. They found medical neglect. They found all of that. Um, they couldn't go in, I guess, on their own. They had to send in the fire marshal to look into a lot of it, but they still investigated it and um, referred some of it to, like, the Department of Education and such. Lynn and Kathy have since resigned. Um, I guess um, they, they just retired finally. But what happened is I felt bad because I'm getting calls from these kids that are in tears. I'm sitting there for hours listening to them cry about how they, that my Lynn and Kathy blew up their lives. They thought they had a legit high school diploma and turns out it, you know, nobody took it. And um, one lady got in touch with me and she said, I, your mom told me um, that if we, we could do their regular school and it's not accredited. So they won't be taken by any college or anything. It's, you know, basically a token piece of paper is what it is. Or I could participate in a program that is, a, is accredited. Did they use, but I have to pay for it. And it's $1,000. So I send your mom $1,000. Well, time goes on. Six months went by. And she says, my kid um, is not changing his schoolwork at all. He's still doing the same schoolwork. That's crap. 
And so I start questioning your mom. Why isn't he put, being put in this new pro, this other program? And uh, she goes, well, you didn't pay for it. And she goes, yeah, I did. I sent you $1,000. I got the canceled check right here, the, 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 the check that went through. And she said, your mom said, well, you didn't write on the check that you wanted it to go to his education. So we just put it in the general fund. And she goes, what are you talking about? You told me. We had a big, long conversation. You knew exactly why I sent that $1,000. And um, so basically they were um, taking people's money. If it goes in the general fund, basically Kathy can take, write, a, write a check directly to herself. Go buy a new TV. If it goes in the general fund, if it was a designated to education, then she would have had to put it to, de to education. But she was told that's what it was for. So um, I guess I told the lady, I go, I don't know if, if I'm you, I'd call the state police and ask them about this. Here's the guy that we talked to. All the kids have been talking to. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know if she did or not. I, I didn't babysit that kind of stuff. I, I'm, I'm not going to do that. It's not my thing. What I'm doing is here's the guy's name and number, and I'm sorry that you went through that. Otherwise, um, we tried to – we talked to CYFD a lot. Um, some of the uh, their administration, they were very frustrated with their inability to – intervene and um Susanna's pulling them back and then making you know defending them when it was Tierra Blanca ranch the the um the problem there um so I I call her office and I get you know we can't tell a church what to do and then I call John San Sanchez's office who was uh, the lieutenant governor and they were like we disagree with Susanna vehemently on this issue um, both are Republicans, by the way, John and Susanna. John's office, um, I knew John from when he ran for, gosh, what did he run for? He ran for, like, state assembly or something before he ran for lieutenant governor. So I already knew him. Um, he was like, well, we, we think that they need to intervene. There's a lot of places that they could intervene. And he goes, by the way, your dad, we know him. We know all about him. He he's he really is good at operating in the gray area, where he does stuff that it's you know it's illegal, but it's in the gray area enough that you can't do a fucking thing about it. We're pissed about it. He goes, he'll have when they have their senses up to a certain point, they have to get invest, they have to get uh, oversight. So your dad manages to keep his just below that number. And he goes, I mean, he your dad's slick, and I was like, tell me about it, and. Um, so, so they were the two offices were arguing back and forth about that issue be between the governor and the lieutenant governor. So then I call like every fucking state assemblyman in the state, and um, went to Nora Espinosa, who was from Roswell, and a personal close friend of ours. It watched she watched us go through shit. My sister and I. So I, of course I go to her. She's seen it firsthand. My sister lived with her. My sister lived with her to get away from my parents. So um, she knew that they what they were what they were cap capable of doing, and she would not respond. So I let that I didn't accuse her of stalking. I left, forgot I, whatever next one. But that's kind of how I am. I make I um, I was mad at her. I let her know I was not happy. I'm like you saw what my sister went through. Why the fuck are you doing this? Why are you doing this to these kids? And um, she wouldn't she wouldn't. Uh, respond like I thought she should or would I actually was kind of surprised how she responded so I don't know what the hell happened and I don't care I just kept calling people until I found somebody that would help and it turns out it was Michael Padilla who was the senator I mean I called people in the state assembly and the senate until I found somebody to help and the, he introduced a bill that would have uh, required some oversight it didn't make it out of committee um, because there was some language in it that that the committee asked him to change and, frankly, I agreed with the committee. I, I completely agreed with them. Now, after that, Charles had me arrested. So I, can, I don't have a reputation left to, continue, to have continued helping those kids. So you didn't just affect me, sir. There's ripples. You know, you've read the um, article that Brian uh, Duncan wrote, Ripples. You affect other people's lives in a good way or a bad way. And you fucked over a lot of people when you did that. Not just me. So um, you fucked over every kid I was trying to help not be abused and not have their life blown up by, you know, whatever you did with Lynn and Kathy, your little partnership there um, that you, 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 I don't understand a person that sits around all day trying to blow up people's lives. I really don't. I'm, I'm sorry for you that that's the best you've got.
That's the best you can do for your kids and for your wife and for your family is sit on your fat, lazy ass, perverting around, figuring out how you can blow up somebody's life. Day after day after day, that's all you do. So what's happening, Mr. Perry, is everybody hates you. You've made people hate your guts. You've made them hate you. So it's not hard for us to get information. When you pester me and take my money and cause me problems and people that I know, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have them. You've, you're seeing things you've not ever seen before. Because we're all about ending suffering, whoever causes it. It just so happens this time it's you. And you're doing it to me. And you pissed off all the wrong people. You pissed off all the wrong people. So um, when you pester me and then you, get, you can't find who has the actual recordings, nobody will help you. That's why. That's why a lot of people are very glad we're putting a stop to what you're doing. A lot of people. You have no idea. Your little organized crime bullshit. Um, listen, I'm from Vegas. I'm, I, I watched, um, you know, if you watch the movie Casino, that's based on a true story. It's Sam uh, Rothstein. Rosenthal, I think. Maybe Rosenthal is the real one. Mayor Goodman plays himself. He was the guy's attorney. He was their attorney, the mafia attorney. Those guys, I saw them defend women and children very well. I had a, a patient that was a kid that had a, he was like, I don't know, he was little, like six, seven, eight years old, had lymphedema. So I, his insurance company paid part of his claim, but not near the whole thing, not enough to cover the cost of the pump for me. So much less all my time and shit. So, um, I mean, I went through their appeals and all this stuff and, and, and I get a final, like about a year and a half into this, I'm appealing and appealing and appealing. They send me a letter. This is our final thing. That's all we're going to pay you. Fuck off. So I, I get in touch with um, a friend of mine that was in, um, you know, you, well, you can call it mafia, whatever the fuck you want to call it, in Vegas. Uh, legit business that has, you know, whatever. They run the casinos and shit. And I got in touch with them and I said, uh, does your, doesn't, don't you guys have a charitable organization that I could get some help for this kid? And um, I didn't really, he didn't really answer me, kind of ham uh, uh, let me get back to you. Well, the next thing I knew, the fucking insurance company sent me the whole check, the whole thing. Never heard, of, never heard back from him, never had another, pro I mean, that was it, I just, got the, I just got the check from the insurance. I was like, wow. So, they're all about protecting women and children, Charles. And so, if you think you're mafia, you suck at it. That's what blew up the mafia, Charles, in the movie Casino. They start fucking with women and kids. The whole thing blew up. They can't keep their pants zipped up. The whole thing blew up. They start getting off the track of what they're supposed to, you know, uh, their thing was was gambling. It was gambling. They got they got off into drugs and, and abusing women and kids and blah, 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 and they, they, everything blew up. Literally blew, blew the fucking town up. So, I mean, w w what kind of stupid are you? get into sex crimes you guys are into sex crimes and you're you, you're just as mafia as it gets rico rico racketeering as they come buying judges buying and mr perry types in my phone oh i win i win just be no you played candy land against yourself and you beat yourself so you didn't win i wasn't in court sir there's four cases now my three civil cases and uh, two, two, Judge Parker and Judge Kirkendall, I guess, had something. You were trying to do a criminal charge. And uh, how do I even know that? See? I need you to leave her alone for two weeks so I can make sure this is not provoked. Because when you keep wrecking our car right at the wheel, getting her kicked out of her house, that's going to be provocation. That's going to piss her off. She's going to talk about it. That's provocation. She has, I have the email from way back, you know, I'm going to send her home and harass the fuck out of her when she complains about it. I'm going to tell everybody she's harassing me. And uh, that's fraud. You lied. Just like Lady Kathy did. So, um, anyways, it's just your, I mean, you have your habit. You have your MO. You have the thing that you always do and you always do it. And you always get caught when you do it to me. Yeah, see, you don't know who I am and you don't know who I know. Do you? You don't know exactly what kind of training I have, do you? There was a period of time, I guess, y'all looked into every 
part of my life and talk to every friend I have. And so one of y'all was recorded. But the only thing we can figure out is right after she broke up with Saeed and she before she got pregnant with Tristan, we think she had some kind of training because that's the only period of time nobody knows really what she was doing. Maybe she was into started getting into training and had to drop out because she got pregnant. Maybe. I'm not going to tell. I will tell you that uh, I'm good at what I do, as you can see. Nobody's caught what I what I've nobody's caught what I've caught, and I've caught more than any. I mean, I've caught this right here is my work product, TPD. I'm good at it. I'm fucking good at what I do. There's a I go over Mike's case, detail by detail, chapter and verse. Here's the what. Here's what happened. This is the here's what happened on Mike's case. He didn't do it. Not can prove it. That's why you wouldn't let me in court. You always keep me out of court four times. I'm supposed to be in court. Three times, the burden of proof is on me, and you don't let me in. I got to I gotta be in my own court lawsuit to prove my case, that I have a lawsuit by clear and convincing evidence, and not, no, not one judge has seen it. Because you have these little secret ex parte, uh, Judge Cummins, let's go duck hunt, and we'll decide out on the duck hunting field what you're going to say, which he says nothing. He never gives a reason for his rulings and never, never cites case law, ever. And a, 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 a case is to be decided not on a whim, but and not showing reckless disregard for the truth. That's your thing, reckless disregard for the truth. That's your, you, you, you get off on that too, don't you? But you're caught when you do it to me. Nobody's sued you before. I have. You tried to run off all the attorneys I consulted with. We know you did. Don't help her. Because my guy goes, you know how he ran off all those attorneys? You had to fucking do it yourself. Because that's how I am. I'll do it myself. You know, who do you think you're dealing with? We've never had one with this much longevity. No, um, you haven't. Mr. Perry's not all there. Because if he really didn't want to get told on, he wouldn't pester me and take my money, would he? It's cause and effect. When he pesters her and takes her money, things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen we've never seen before. And Charles is like, let's do it more. Hey, hey guys, let's do it more, more. We, we got to do it some more. Because he likes getting told on. He likes being told on. You like being caught, Charles? That's the only thing you get. You never get a date. You're not loved or wanted. But you're told on and told on and told on. You have to like it. There's no way you don't. You don't do the same fucking thing every fucking day, all fucking day long, if you don't like what you're getting out of it. Can't control yourself. You can't control your leaks either. We control that. So this is like I got texts out of Mickey James, you know, admitting to a uh, you know, threat. He said the death threat first and verbally, and um, the next day I'm like, I got to see if I can't get him to text that to me. Well, I did. He texted it to me. This is um, my chapter and verse Mike's deal, like Justice Scalia. Here's the thing with Justice Scalia. With Mike, we know you killed Lucky and framed Mike. We know you did. We got you on that. Just because you're not in jail yet, Charles, doesn't mean you're not going to go to jail for that. I promise you, you will. Go ahead and tell yourself you won't. Go ahead and tell yourself you won't. See, here's the thing. As a man thinketh, so shall he be. You are not loved. You are not wanted. Everybody hates your guts. And you're told on and told on and told on. And you make all kinds of phone calls, wanting information. Who's helping her? Where's those Where's those recordings? I can't, I want to get them. I'll buy them. I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear them up. I'm going to destroy them. I'm destroying evidence. That's my thing. And then we found out you made that phone call. More than one. You made a bunch of them, didn't you? So, what are you getting for what you do, genius? If you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. That defini definition of insanity. Do the same thing, get the same results. Do the same thing, expect different results, then you're insane. You are. So, as a man thinketh, so shall he be. You want to be caught? Do you want to be caught because you do? You pester and you take my money, and you pester and you take my money, and you pester and you take my money, and you try to get me pulled over, and you try to do that, coax me to do that, and coax me to so you can cause this problem and that problem, and you get me kicked out and you know, every day, and then you you get caught and told on, and everybody, oh, how'd she find out? Because nine times out of ten, we find out beforehand, and I got an email about it before you did it. Then I can go, well, I told you so. There's premeditation right there. There's mains ray right there. What you got to do? When you're going to do a crime, Mr. Perry, is you got to prove the elements of the crime. 
means motive opportunity intent you intended to commit a crime it was malicious intent you intended to cause an injury you knew you were breaking the law and you did it anyway and you do it after you know we caught you on all that you do it anyway and then you go oh how'd she find out oh, how'd, i can't believe this nobody will help me anymore nope you got some guys on your payroll i feel bad for them what were they thinking i don't know so we got all this is my this is my work product these are my uh you know i got all this I recorded pinto he's offering uh, five grand to sleep with the weirdo i'm like nope and by the way he says you could ruin him politically what's my response i don't give a fuck i want him to leave me alone that's what i say anybody could go to that page i'll show you in a minute these are mickey james texts uh hang on these are Mickey James Stokes. Hi, this is Cynthia Ortiz. It is the Charles Perry Stalker Podcast, August 20th, yeah. 2021, Friday. And um, so we have kind of a lot to go over, but I don't have a lot of time today, so I'm going to make it quick. I'm trying to shut it um, off. Oh, you is. know, there's the whole effort to frame me. Uh, there's been that going See? for a long, long, long time. Um, that started, started actually with the first fault. Okay, so I was talking about that a long time ago, wasn't I? What's the date on this? April 20, 2021. <laughs> okay. Look at that. He said this verbally. I mean, he's going to kill you. And I'm like, so I texted to him the next day, and he says the same thing. It might be worth the risk for him to have this suspicion of Gary Condit and Chandra Levy to kill you. It might be worth the risk. He, t he said he did um, gun instruction for law enforcement. He's former DEA. I, I was like, sure, okay, I'll say I'll believe you if you'll shut up and go away. Give me what I want. I know you work for Charles. Let's prove that. Then he says um, that he signed an NDA. He's trying to talk me out of litigation like Pinto did. I got this guy's to text this to me, TPD. It's called Dragon Slaying. I'm trying to find where he did the... Right here. He says to me, I, lo I know a lot. I lo I've been watching behind the scenes. And uh, you can't talk, you know, when you signed a letter of discretion. Oh, well, like an NDA? You saw, oh, did you sign an NDA? Oh, and there won't be ever be any charges. Not here. Really? Okay. Good thing there's somebody else on this. Thanks for letting me know that Charles has bought some cops and there won't be any charges. Thank you for texting that to me, Mickey James. See, this is how you slay dragons, TPD. I got this guy texting this shit to me. I'm, I'm guessing you no know, other victims have that, Charles, right? Yep, I do. I've got it. Yeah, right here. I've been watching from behind the scenes. So, who the fuck are you? Came into my work at Lipsticks and pretended he liked me. And I pretended I liked him back. <laughs> kind of. Kind of, I didn't. I wouldn't go out with him uh, outside of the club. Hang on. So there's more. There's a lot more. But that. So I got Dave texting me. Uh, you know. D uh, hang on. So I got Dave texting me this death threats. I got Mickey James texting me all that shit. He texted me, and like I said, he did it verbally. All that shit he said it verbally the night before. Well, I couldn't get it on hi where he was. I couldn't get it recorded without him being able to tell. That's what I was doing. Uh, I, I had two things that I had to watch out for. One is I got to be able to record this guy without him knowing I'm recording him. And two is the music can't be so loud you can't hear a fucking thing we say anyway. So there was those two things that it just so happened at Blue Diamond where I was standing um, and where Pinto was. It worked out perfectly. I was standing right across from the manager at the bar. So I felt m more safe and I could I could put my recorder in a place where he couldn't see it. And it wasn't so, we were in the next room over. So you could still hear the music. It was still kind of loud, but not so loud that it completely drowned out the whole conversation. So um, it just worked out that I could record him. Mickey, um, I, I couldn't. The way we were sitting and the place we were, where we were, I couldn't do it where he couldn't, where he wouldn't have been able to see it. He would have seen it. So instead, the next day I'm going, I got to get this guy somehow. He said all this shit to me and I need that. I need him to say it again. So maybe I get him to say it in a text. I did. He did. So um, I, I was like, wow, okay. But, I mean, when you when you do this shit, you, you don't want the other person to know what you're doing. So 
Uh, as you can see, I'm pretty fucking good at it. So this is all the uh, menu on this website, justiceforsin.com. And so, th yeah, anybody at t TPD, you want to know my case, you want to know the truth, don't want to show reckless disregard for the truth, now do we? This is my work product. This is what I've been working on all this time while well, you guys didn't help. So, um, we got all that. And this, of course, it doesn't get any better than when the bad guy comes right to you and won't fucking leave, right? I have to, I didn't go to him. He came to me. This is Pento at Blue Diamond. Came to me. He's like, I'm, your husband sent me. I'm not married. I think you got the wrong girl. No, I didn't get the wrong girl. Your husband sent me. No, dude, listen, I'm not married. I'm not the person you're looking for. Describe her and I'll, I'll find her for you. Oh, no, the senator from Texas. Oh, my God. Well, that's, I mean, they were starting to argue. That's when I start trying to get my recorder on. When he said that, I was like, what the fuck? I go, dude, he's nothing. He's a stalker. So he proceeds to solicit prostitution. And Perry's worried about me dancing with my socks on. I did, I, a year after I quit dancing. Now he, he needs this, he needs the smear campaign, TPD. So there's that. Yeah, and here we go. I'm your caretaker. The fuck? I don't need a caretaker. Thanks, though. There's the... He'll, get, he'll give you five grand if you'll be creeped out by him. If you'll... Uh, I, I'm like, no. Fuck no. Uh, if he gets anywhere near me, I'll beat the hell out of him. Actually, after this, I had a couple of guys come to me. Probably his guys. Do you want us to beat him up for you? And I, one of them, I finally was like, man, I'm sick of that. I said, listen, dude. You see my arms... And he was like, yeah, like, you're all fit and stuff. And I was like, I can beat the fuck out of myself. I don't need your help for that. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, did he send you in here to try to get me to say, oh, I want to beat him up or I want to beat up? You know, did you, you, you know, you're trying to get me on that. You're always trying to get me on something. Here's the thing. I'm not going where he is. If he comes near me, I'll beat the fuck out of him all by myself. I don't need anybody's help to do it for me. I, I got it. I can do it. I can do all this. I do a lot of things. I do have help from somewhere else. So then he tells me, I tell, I kept, I'm like, he's a fruitcake. He's a weirdo. He's not getting a date with me. He's too weirdo. Here we go. Politically, you could ruin him. And I'm like, do I, do I look like I care about his politics? Fuck no. He doesn't matter. He's a small town nobody. I, I think I said that. He thinks he's important. He's not. He's a small town nothing. And, uh, I'm like, I don't care about that. I want to leave me alone. And guys like you not come in here. So I file an injunctive order. And, and there should have been a hearing right there, right then for this. Mark Warman files the actual recording, which shocked the shit out of me. I was expecting him to argue for its suppression on the grounds that it was inflammatory. I was expecting that. So when he put it into evidence himself, I about fell off. I about fell out of my chair. I couldn't believe it. I was like, whoa. He's going to put it in himself. So forget now forever arguing that it's inflammatory and for its suppression, Mark. You put it in. But then we, we didn't have a hearing, and there should have been a hearing. So that's the other problem. Mr. Perry is going to have to explain in his other, on his, to his jury in his criminal case. Why did that happen? It's not supposed to happen that way. Why did it? You can't play Candyland or chess or whatever. I, I'm sure you can't play chess. You can't play Candyland by yourself, Mr. Perry, against yourself, and then tell everybody you won. That's not how that works. Romper room. That's not how that works. You got to have an opponent in a real game. Then you can claim you won, and you've had no such thing. But the problem is when you do it, you blow up a life. So we're kicking your criminal ass like it's never been kicked before. And you've bothered me all fucking night. Don't bother me. I don't like it. What I'd like you to do is leave me the fuck alone. When you bother me, or pester, whatever word you want to use, and take my money, things don't go well for you. Are you able to understand the words I'm saying? Because it seems like you have no idea. What people are saying to you. And you need a nurse to help you. So I'm not going to explain this to you again. When you bother me, we get a lot more information. Nobody wants to help you. We all want you gone. The goal here is you're gone. And there is no more financial loss. There are no more families blown up. There are no more futures ruined. There are no, no more. 
It's done. It's over. So when we get information, it's very easy. It gets easier and easier the more harm you cause because you start causing animosity. People start hating your guts, and they do. We all do. I do. When you took my child, when you took my child, I'm not going to forgive you. I don't know why you thought after that we would be friends. Why would you think that? We're, you're a job. And that you, I couldn't tell you. I'm telling you now. You're a job. You always were. I get to work. I did the work. TPD, I've done the work, motherfuckers. And I'm good at it. Because that guy had no idea what I was doing. Nor did Mickey James. Nor did uh, Gene Mitchell and Travis Myers. Because I sting up to their asses too. Do remember, when I got in touch with Mr. Myers and Mr. Mitchell, what I told Mr. Mitchell is, I've got a lot of evidence for you. I've already sent you five emails. I'm not going to send you any more. I'm going to set up a Dropbox, which I did, which he never even looked in. So I recorded this deposition. And if you listen to what I'm saying, I'm trying to catch him being linked to Charles Perry, which I did. And he had no idea that's what I was doing. I want to catch this bitch, both of them, linked up to Charles Perry. Because Charles Perry killed Chief Miller, not Mike. And when I did this, if, you, if you're smart, TPD, and you listen to this depo, you might be able to tell that's what I was doing. I don't know. I, I, I'd like to see if you, I, I'm, I'd like to see what you think, if you can tell that's what I'm doing. That's exactly what I was doing. That's exactly what I did. I linked Charles to those two. These two. They're part of the corruption. Right? They're part of the corruption. Because everybody knows when Gene Mitchell went into court and said with his ass while he's asleep and unconscious and in respiratory distress, he caused blunt force trauma to Chief Miller's head, strangulation and uh, decapitation internally with his ass. He, he, he got drunk and fell on him and did all that. No person ever in the history of anything has done that. He doesn't have superpowers. Where you guys come up with this shit, I don't even know. You guys can't even lie right. It's so easy. It's not even fair. So we've done this, TPD. I'm good at what I do. This is a sting up. So was the Pinto, so was the Pit, the Mickey James, so was the Terry Wagner. Because Terry Wagner came in and immediately, he's in con road construction, and immediately, because everybody's a bad guy until they're not, to me, I'm telling him, do you know this guy named David Robertson that owns Dynamic Shot? I know that guy. I didn't tell him how I knew him or why I knew him or anything. And he goes, nope, never heard of him. Sure, you've been in road construction in the sta same state, Oklahoma, for 40 years and never heard of him. Bullshit. You work for him, or you, and he sent you, or you wouldn't say that. You'd have said, at least said you heard of him. I lived in Vegas. Vegas is two million people. Everybody in the medical industry who's anybody knew certain doctors and certain nurses. Everybody knows Brenda Leak. Everybody knows Dr. Plon. I promise you, those two doctors, everybody knows them. There's a bunch of other ones everybody's heard of. You may not know them, but you heard of them. And that's two million people. So I'm, um, and I worked in it, um, I don't know, 10 years, not 40. Yeah, see, you, you guys act like I'm stupid. I'm, she's just a stupid stripper. No, not really. Not really, that's not it. Um, so there's that. And this was my interview with Jason Moore about Judge Walker and um, the child abuse thing. Mr. Perry, stop contacting me. Mr. Perry, listen to the words I'm saying. Try to understand me. No one's going to help you. We don't want to help you. What is it we want? What's our goal? You're gone. That's the goal. You're gone. You're in jail. You're gone. There is no more of this. There's no more poke and peep. You're gone. You're, there's, there's no more you bothering me. You're gone. That's the goal. So when you continue to ask me, is it this guy or is it that guy? I want to laugh at you. Why is it you think I would help you with that? I'm not told that, and I've said that over and over and over and over and over. But even if I knew, if I want you for you to be gone, why the fuck would I help you? Why, why do you think these things that are so bizarre, nobody, I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it, sir. I don't want to help you. I want you to be gone. And the more you fuck with me, the more pissed off I get at you, and the more I want you gone. 
So when you ask me if it's this person or that person that told or that's helping us, I mean, why would you think that? Why would you think I would help you? We want for you to be gone. I'm not going to help you ever. I want you gone. Stop bullshitting yourself. Stop bothering me. Stop bothering me. The more you bother me, the more we get. Stop bothering me. Do you like getting told on? Do you like it? Because you piss us all off when you bother me. When you cause me any kind of loss at all. You piss everybody off. All the wrong people. Because I know all the wrong I know all the right people for me, the wrong people for you. You're seeing things happen you've not seen before. Why can't you get cause and effect? First grader could do it. A first grader could fucking do it. You need a nurse. You really need a nurse. Don't contact me and don't contact my friends and family. I don't like it. Please stop. We want you gone because you're doing that. When you're gone, we don't have to deal with your shit anymore. I'm never going to help you. We don't want to deal with your shit anymore. No more peeping. No more hacking. No more jam ups. No more money gone. No more of you taking up my time. Nothing. It's over. You're gone. Mike gets to go home. You're gone. That's the goal. Nobody's gotten closer to the goal than me. Nobody you know. Write it down. One of you guys that work for him, can you not explain it to him? Do you not? I'm not. I'm done. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm. I'm trying to explain it. I'm tired of explaining it. I'm tired of repeating myself. We all we're tired of hearing the same thing, over and over and over and over. What in the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, Charles? I don't want to hear from you. Stop bothering me. Do not contact me or my friends or family again. Stop contacting me. I don't like it. Stop peeping. I don't like it. Go away. Shut up. And leave me alone. Go away. Somebody explain what those words mean. He acts like he has no idea. It's very irritating to deal with someone that's stupid. I, I can't do it. That's not my gift. You know what's my gift? Shit like that. Getting that. Doing that Doing that right there. That depot that turned into a sting up. And they had no idea what I was doing. I didn't volunteer up. That I knew. You know. I, I'm telling them. I knew Mike was drugged before. You guys got that in a deposition. And I emailed you. Florida State's attorney, and I told you, and you didn't get back to me. I, I kind of expected you to go, how did you know that? But see, that wasn't relevant to what you were really after, was it? It was not relevant to, it's relevant to Mike, but you're not trying to help Mike. You're not, you're showing a dis reckless disregard for the truth. You don't care about the truth. This is not about fact-finding. This isn't about getting the real offender. The real offender's still out offending, by the way. What this is about is you want to frame me for the harassment thing Charles is trying to do. So I'm linking you to him. I'm putting you in the corruption deal, the case. Your corruption case, I'm putting you in it. By what, the way you answer me and the way you talk to me. And you, you fucked it up. You helped me. We're, we got it. We got what we wanted. We got exactly what we wanted. Except now we want Mike home. Right? Concealment of a material fact, Charles, is perjury. When you have a duty to disclose it, and it, it's a material fact pertinent, and it could change the outcome, and you willfully and knowingly, knowingly uh, withhold it or conceal it, that's perjury. It's U.S. versus Strom. It's, it's here. It's on, this, it's on this page. U.S. versus Strom, U.S. versus Freeland, whatever it is. I've got it here. We put that on everything. We put it on everything. Whoever puts up anything at all, it's on everything. Right? That's what establishes perjury. One is First Circuit, one is Sixth Circuit. So, because I can read, as it turns out. It's the funniest thing I can read. Um, I'm not a stupid stripper, like you told everybody. Well, she's just a stupid stripper. She's a groupie. She says, she says wait, she's lying. Nope, you are. Curry versus Streeter is, um, oh, Employers Mutual versus Martile Roofs is 10th Circuit. You got a, a company incorporated in one state, another company incorporated in another state, and in a completely different state, they do work that went bad, and they got sued. So the, the, the 10th Circuit said, where the injury occurred is where it's the uh, nexus of the, in, you know, that's that has the jurisdiction. So Tulsa had the jurisdiction, should have never hit a, hit, been in Lubbock. Yeah, okay. So, you're, there's a lot of court shit you did underhandedly that you're going to have to pay for. Go ahead and lie to yourself. Like, you know, you don't know what your legislative duties are, and you think watching TV is a romance. 
Okay, go ahead and tell yourself. You tell yourself whatever bullshit you want to. Okay? Make a fool of yourself all you want to. But you're fixing to find out the hard way. You were wrong. This is... Marler versus Clover is the one that says you gotta have a police report to get a stalking protective order in the state of Oklahoma. Curry versus Streeter says... Um, her, if, if it's stalking, it has to be a pattern of harassment. And if you're a cop and you're off-duty and out of jurisdiction, you can't um, get qualified immunity. You don't get to harass people. And then Sunderland versus Zimmerman is Discovery Act of Oklahoma. And, by the way, when there's a protective order asked for, within 14 days, you got to have a hearing. I didn't get a hearing. Marla, I mean, Patel versus OMH, that's 12-10-31, fraud upon a court. Which you did, you fucked with that one again. So what's going to happen on the Supreme Court with that one, Charles? You're gonna, we're gonna wait till you're arrested, and then see what we can do with that. He intentionally kept me from appealing. Um, there's a Supreme Court case, United States Supreme Court case, that says if you intentionally imp impede a person's ability to, uh, to comp you know, to uh, comply with the orders of the court or deadlines set by the court, that you can reopen the case. It's not my fault. It's your fault. You are the causation. You can get it reopened. If you can show the court, the other side kept me from meeting the deadlines. So you are going to pay for that too, one way or the other. Do you, want, do you want me to wait until you're in jail or you want me to do it now? Which one do you want me to do? You tell me. If you're in jail, you can't buy any more judges. So I have a better chance. So should I just wait until you're in jail and then your jury finds you guilty? They get to decide first. And you can't buy any more judges. Do you want me to wait or do you want me to do it now? When you can still buy the judges and all that shit. You tell me. Since you never shut up, tell us. Go ahead and tell us what you want us to do. But you can't play Candyland against yourself and then go tell everybody you won. And that's what you do, romper room. Muffin man. You guys are something with your daycare words. So there's the thing on Walker. And again, Mark, your client will not shut up and leave me alone. I don't want to hear from him. It pisses me off. Here's the thing. When I tell somebody don't contact me, leave me the fuck alone, and you don't, it really doesn't do anything. But uh, you're inflaming a very bad situation. It's inflaming a very, very bad situation. No one's done what I've done. Write it down, damn it. You haven't seen anybody do what I've done. Nobody. None of your other victims have done what I've done. So does that make me a victim or does that make you a job? Yeah, you need to get a grip on reality. You tell you guys tell yourself some goofy stuff. None of it's based in reality. None of it has any fucking thing to do with reality. And we're all laughing at him. We're like, my guys are like, I've not had one this weird or this stupid. I don't think it ever. It's so easy, it's not even fair. They get everybody mad. It is not hard to get information. And then they think you're everybody. somebody will help them. Nobody's going to help them. Everybody wants them gone. Everybody wants us over. We get, we get chewed out all the time. Hurry up, y'all. We'll be like, we're, where we are. We got, there's, when, it, when you're dealing with more than one country, you got shit, that stuff, legal shit. And we, the way we want to do it, they all go and it's done. It's over. And there's not any grounds for appeal. So we're going to try to do it right. It takes a little longer. Hang in there with us. But I'm not the only one that complains it's taking a while. There, are, Everybody's mad at TPD. TPD could have got part of it. Maybe all, maybe a lot more than what. If they, if you got your guys and didn't do what Mickey James said, there won't be any charges here. Charles, did you threaten TPD if they put you in jail? What are you going to do? What are you going to do to TPD if they pull me over? If they don't pull me over. You ordered they pull me over. We all know about it. I've said it over and over and over. Did you threaten TPD? What you threaten them with? Do it. You're gonna do to to them what 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 you did to Chief Miller and Mike. You gonna th say that to my face? Say it to me. Don't don't threaten anybody else. Don't give anybody else a hard time. Don't stop being a, po a coward and a pussy. You want to threaten somebody? You threaten me and you do it to my face. Get your football helmet on before you come near me, because I'll I'll beat the shit out of you. You're gonna have to yell it across the parking lot. Stop going behind my back, y'all. And do it to you're gonna threaten me. Threaten me to my fucking face. Okay? Get some balls. Quit being a little coward pussy. Do it to me. Don't go don't fuck around with my friends and family anymore. You're gonna throw it to the cops. You wanna threaten somebody, you do it to me. 
because I can handle it. I, I am. You're seeing things you've not seen before. Leave us alone. Get a life. Get off your fat, lazy, perverted ass. Go fucking work and be with your family. Go be. My guys make fun of you when you type that in my phone. And it's not part of your legislative duties to do that. What are your legislative duties? What state do you live in? What state do you legislate in? Do you know? Act like you understand what people say. You act like you have no idea. Get the puppets and crayons out. I am not an open book. Nobody cares. This makes my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? Pictures? You want, I got sure scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging oh, outside of there. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna you bring the whole fucking threat? army. You're gonna I don't give a fuck. This make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you is feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on? <laughs> Do you see how stupid that guy sounds? It doesn't even make sense. I don't. I got pictures of you. What the fuck? And he's not gonna ever get a date with her. I mean, he's not gonna get a date with that chick. He's making a buffoon of himself. So are you, Charles? Listen, get off your ass and go do something normal, okay? You need the alibi.